Today's Bible study is titled, I Lie Not. In our previous verses in Galatians, Paul has shown that, after, his salvation by grace, he did not immediately go to Jerusalem, to them which were apostles before him, with the purpose of, demonstrating the difference in the message and audience, Christ gave him verses that which he gave the twelve we, learned that, after three years, Paul finally did go up to Jerusalem, to see Peter, and with good reason as we'll see in Galatians 2. With this established, Paul continues the history lesson regarding, his calling, message, and ministry, today. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. Galatians 1 verses 19 to 24, KJV. Let's break this down. As mentioned above, three years after being saved by grace on the road to Damascus, Paul finally went to Jerusalem specifically to see Peter, leader of the twelve, per Matthew 16 verses 13 to 19. And today, Paul says that while there he saw none of the other apostles, save James the Lord's brother. This is an odd statement, given that James the Lord's brother was not one of the twelve. But the student of the word will ask, why say any of this at all? What is the point of relating all of this, given Paul's concern about the damage being done in Galatia by the preaching of another gospel? And the answer, as we shall see, is that Paul is developing the case for the gospel of the grace of God given him by the risen Lord. So important is this history lesson that Paul is giving the Galatians and us that he pauses here and states, Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not, and the student of the word will ask why. Why did Paul pause and say this? What is so important in this history of the grace message given him that he pauses to defend it in this manner? Before we try to answer these questions, let's note that Paul continues the history saying, Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed and they glorified God in me. And to the conclusion and answer to the obvious questions listed above, we will see, as we continue to read, that Paul is developing the case for grace as the latest revelation from the risen Christ and very good news indeed for Gentile and Jew alike. 4. With the failure of Israel to repent, change their mind, regarding their Messiah and become the witnesses and kingdom of priests they were prophesied to be. Israel is concluded in unbelief, Romans 11 verse 32, along with the Gentiles, and as a result the pathway to God for the Gentile, and Jew, regarding Israel's kingdom and new covenant is temporarily disrupted. And the case for grace will continue with Paul showing the implications his message for which I lie not and the associated power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was, kept secret since the world began, Romans 16 verse 25. Believer, recognize the groundwork of the case for grace that, Paul is laying to keep the message of the gospel of grace pure and effective to the salvation of all who will believe. Thank you for listening to this Bible study today.